what I'm looking for here on uh, Google Images using gold bar markings as a search criteria is something that could be a suitable height map for a terrain to give me a gold bar shape. Now, something with a black background like this might be ideal, but there's too much uh, variation all across the surface here to uh, to be really useful as a height map. Likewise, for something like this, it's got uh, a dark and light reflection effect is no good. So what I want is something that's quite bland. It doesn't have to be grayscale, uh, but something like this, where there's not much variation, or indeed one I spotted earlier, this one, which is quite plain, except for the fact it's on a white background, but I can do something about that. This, again, too much uh, contrast on the gold itself, which is quite reflective. One of the key features of gold being its reflection, and that's something we're going to take advantage of. So I'll click on this image and then uh, I'll use print screen, go to PaintShop Pro, right click, paste as new image and then just use this quickly to generate my height map. So uh, it's not going to be a very large image but uh, if you can find a large image that would be better. So I'll try and get this more or less square. So I want the width to match the height. Okay, and then just crop that out there. And I need this background to be black. I could try and flood fill this by flood filling to black, but you can see there's a bit of an issue here that I need to sort out. So to do that, what I could do is use one of these shapes, make sure I don't have anti-aliasing checked, and with the rounded corners, try and match this corner up. So the other ones are okay, so it's mainly that corner that I need to deal with. So if I just do this, stretch it out, if I can make it full screen I can get the adjustment so that curve matches that corner there and then uh, let's see uh, just uh, layers merge flatten so I've got a dark line down that edge and then uh, do it again for the other side try and match that curve in there like so and then layers merge all flatten so and then I can just flood fill these areas now like so, get rid of these odd spots. How, whatever paint package you use, you just aim. I'm just aiming to get a dark background so that uh, this this bit will be raised up on the train. So if I go edit and copy now, and then go over to Bryce and hold the control key down and left click on. I'll I'll use a lattice. That's probably a good idea. And then edit and go to pictures and paste. And then on the blend command left click and drag it over to the side apply that gives me my height map it's a little bit spiky in places so I can go elevation and smoothing just to smooth it down a bit okay it's not going to be super but it'll be enough for uh, purposes so I'll just check out of here now uh, use the side view keyboard chuck three flatten it out a bit enlarge it a bit lift it up onto the surface so it looks an appropriate scale. Move my camera around and have a look at it from above. So this is going to be my gold block. One of the problems with using lattices is a common problem. You have this issue where the join shows up. And the reason for this showing up is the steepness of this edge here. So sometimes you can modify the cutoff point by just using the edge of this bracket that does that and uh, you can make it less obvious but it will modify how thick it appears so you need to just be aware of that and make appropriate adjustments but really that's probably going a bit far because what we're mainly concerned with is the appearance of this looking like gold I'm just gonna make one minor modification I'm gonna I'm gonna use that raise and lower to raise it up so it flattens the top out more so the impressions on the top aren't quite as deep and maybe that will straighten the sides up for me at the same time as well ish a bit okay we'll not worry about that too much so to make this look like gold I'm going to start by using material go into the library select pro materials and metals I'm going to start with this frosted white gold and we'll just check out of that and see how it looks so okay this is not ideal at the moment but I'm going to try and adjust it so it looks more like gold as I go along. Now as I was saying one of the key features of its appearance is going to be what background it reflects. I'm going to use 
a HDR image made by Horo. Uh, it's one that comes with, I think, Practical Price Volume 1, and it's this uh, garage closed HDR. I'm going to use a low resolution just to keep the memory footprint print small. Take the intensity up to 12, switch to render in scene, and just, uh, turn the sunlight off automatically. It has, but I can just give some output from here. Reduce the saturation so it's not as blue. Mainly concerned with what's happening. Now, if I turn the sun on, because I'm going to use this effect in a bit, I'm going to just get rid of the diffuse output and have the specular output so I can have some specular response. So I've got reflection response and specular response on there. Turn the quality down for speed and then just give this a quick render and see how it looks. Okay, so the reflections have helped. Possibly the frosting of the materials a bit too much. So I'll lower that value there. And then we'll consider making a few more modifications to this uh, material. Well, let's take the metallicity up. And if I hold Alt key down, click on the color swatch and go to HLS, I can take the saturation up to maximum. So making this gold really gold colored. At the moment, the highlight is uh, is just a standard specularity, but we can use anisotropy to create a different effect. But uh, the specular halo is a bit large at the moment, so I'll set that down and then we can get more of a, a sharper highlight there with this combination. Now I'm being that's good, no diffuse, that's good. We've got specular, which is giving us this highlight now. Uh, metallicity, which is taking the diffuse color through reflection. Reflection might be a bit high, so we can make it uh, appear a little bit darker. Anisotropy, uh, it's not too bad, I don't think, in terms of how it's going to look. So that's given us quite uh, a dark gold color. And if we want to uh, move the sun around now, we can use a specular to change its appearance. It might not be clear how the specular is interacting with this flat surface immediately. And the other thing we've got going on, I'll just save this camera position, is that the bright sky is mixed with the image. So we can you see there's the sun in the sky. So if I go to the sky lab here, image based lighting uses backdrop. I'll use add to sky now. And the reason for doing that is then we can go and turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black. You can see progress here and then we'll get a much higher contrast background. Restore the camera position. I'll give this a quick render. So I want a few of these. So if I've, I've settled on that being about right for the train, I'm just going to copy and paste these out. So I'll get a few of them going. Control C, Control V. I'll just uh, distribute them. Don't need to be too accurate about this after all. Control C, Control V, and do it that way as well. All right. So now with a few of these on the go, I'm going to say, pull my camera back, narrow the field field of view somewhat, narrow, narrow and narrow, narrow the field of view somewhat, and then sky and fog, and I'll go to use the rendering scene, and then I can see when uh, my see the specular highlight coming in. Yeah, nice atrophy there, so I can create a bit of a gradient across the surface with that effect and I've also got the option if I hold the control key down I can rotate the background on its y-axis and then I can change where these highlights which are the result of the reflections of these lights appear which obviously adds to the effect of goldness so okay right sort of get in there now I want to bring in perhaps uh, some more sophisticated effects. So I'm going to change the document setup to one to one. That's going to over reduce the overall size. Zoom in a bit more, potentially. And then I'm going to go and set up render options, premium effects, depth of field. And I'll select this closest to the camera one and then set to current selection. So this is quite a large lens radius. I'll just test it with um, a low raise per pixel and assign the maximum ray depth down to reduce the number of reflections so that's reflections after reflections so let's see if we're getting some depth of field blurring here now I wanted to exaggerate that effect what I would do is bring the camera in widen the field of view because it's the this the front back ratio distance uh, difference between the camera and its closest to furthest object so if I now go and set to current selection so that's virtually half the distance now 
then the effect of the depth of field will be more exaggerated because I've moved the camera in. This is the one that's in focus. So that's what I was looking for there. The next step then, I'm going to, since I'm already using premium effects, I might as well use uh, more advanced lighting. So I'm going to create a radial light. I'm going to modify its uh, family grouping to remind me that this is going to be a special light. I'm going to call it background. Capital B is critical and so is the spelling. And then I'm going to enlarge this. So call this obscure lighting because when I edit this light, what I'm going to do is turn off its output, make it true, optim uh, true ambience optimized, use gel, go to procedural, reset it to default gray. So this is going to be a surface that receives light from my HDRI image. I'm going to include only itself and it's going to work through true ambience. So I'll just check out of there go into sky and fog and make the appropriate adjustments here so it doesn't need to cast shadows it does need to be lit from the inside it only needs to include the background which is our light source and I also need to make sure that uh, I might need apply to light source to multiply the light up but I will definitely need to turn off true ambience optimization so what we're doing is applying a direct light from our HDRI image to the light source which is an invisible object but visible to our true ambience lighting. At this point I can also, if I wanted to have uh, the sun providing some of the light, I could use soft shadows, turn that right up because it's a small subject, get some of the light in there. It's going to be quite difficult to balance this out. I might find I've got too much HDRI effect but I uh, have to see how it looks first and then uh, I'll just check out of here, go into render options and select soft shadows, true ambience, TA scatter correction, boost light, I've already turned the maximum ray depth down and give this a quick render at a very coarse resolution. So that possibly is a little bit too bright at the moment. So what I shall do is I shall cut the output from my uh, HDRI image just to darken this ground a bit. And then you can see the blurring effect there from the depth of field. This is in the foreground. So uh, so now I've just got a few more things to think about before I set up the final render. What I've found is that um, with the true ambience and, uh, and depth of field, you need a high render resolution. So I'll just set that up and do a little test just here to see how it's going to be rendering. OK, I just paused the video briefly there so uh, you didn't need to watch that happening right you can see it's still quite noisy so what I could do with doing is rendering this at a slightly higher resolution perhaps twice this resolution and then compress it back down using a paint package to uh, to give me a bit more because I can't turn the race pixel up any higher this is the highest value the other thing I've been considering is this surface is a little bit too smooth so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my lattices and edit the material uh, no, edit the tech. Uh, now I can't edit the terrain. If I edit the terrain, it'll only work on one. That's the problem. Even though I've got them all selected and they're all the same terrain, I could have done with, you know, if instancing. If I was any good at instancing, I could remember how it worked properly. Maybe that would work with these terrains, but that's not going to work. So maybe the answer is to modify the material rather than get bogged down in that. So I go into my texture. Hello. Okay. Right. So this is just a very high frequency noise function here so it's a Roni noise function let's see what it turned up to oh it's not too high frequency there so I can I can add in another channel and uh, I'll just pop that in there let's see let's use stucco noise take the frequency down somewhat take the octaves up and reset oh, I'm doing it on this channel so I want to average reset this so I've got some additional creasing in the surface can you see that there so I've got a fine noise in the surface and uh, this uh, larger creasing of the surface so I'll take this down so it's at a lower level a little bit turn the bump up a bit more give that a quick render probably gone a bit too crinkly there by the looks of it hard to view just yet so I'll just do a bit of an area here and lower so that's that's bumped the surface up quite a lot. Maybe I edit, overdid it with this value, but the other thing is I can I can turn this value down here. So it's just, as long as it's got a bit of a wiggle in. I've gone too far the other way now. Yeah. 
So go back in here, add a little bit more noise, but don't take it out too much. So I'm just trying to make, make the gold look a bit more creased on the surface. Pitch my camera down slightly to frame this up. I think we're more or less there now. So render options and take it up to 256 rays per pixel. Then file document setup and I'm going to render it out at double its uh, resolution. So that's going to take a little while. I'll just set that going. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll load it into PaintShop Pro and then half its dimensions again afterwards. And then, well, that's about it really. So I uh, hope you found that interesting. We'll see how the uh, how the, the music in the background turns out. Cause this was a test for that. And uh, you can let me know in the comments if you think it's worked well or not. Okay then, cheers now.